All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is going on? Today, we are back again, kind of with an old time video. Um, I've been meaning to do, you know, these types of videos where I get the computer out, you know, like a tier list type, like this type more often. But I'm going to be honest, ever since, you know, my school email got uh, canceled, right? And I've been stuck uh, using, you know, basically my Screencastify membership got taken away, right? I would like, I would have had to pay like $40 a month or something to keep using it. I was too lazy to figure out how to use another software. But anyways, we figured it out with some help from some great friends of mine. And today we're back again with some traditional content, you know. Um, I didn't want to make just Vikings content. I know there's a lot of followers of the channel who aren't into that type of stuff. So we're back and you can expect more coming soon, right? So 2022, man, what a great year. Every year, every year I come back here and say, wow, that was like a, that was the best year of my life, right? And it feels like just yesterday I was making a video about 2021. You know, it, it really it really flew by quick, which I hopefully mean hopefully that means I was having fun, right? But through this video, I'm just gonna take you guys through some of my best moments throughout the year or my favorite moments. Um, I wasn't able to cover it all. I'm trying to keep the video a little shorter. Don't want to go you know beyond 30 minutes, for instance. But uh, we'll see. Um, We'll see how much I talk. I'm a guy who likes to talk a lot. So, uh, but anyhow, um, the, you know, this video, I kind of just go through uh, some of the things I really had fun doing this year. And it's somewhat chronological, like sort of, but not completely. And instead, I think last year I was putting dates on everything. This year I just decided, let's just categorize, right? Because I could talk about, for example, right? I could talk about Ultimate Frisbee, but then like, I would have to cover it like five different times, right? So why don't I just do it all on one slide? But anyways, let's get into it. Starting off with kind of the beginning of the year, January, February, it was hard for me to think of something, right? Because recency bias floods everyone's minds, right? Not only in sports, you know, um, people saying that Tua is better than Aaron Rodgers, for instance, right? But you'll get into, you know, you get into like real life and you can only think about what happened recently, right? So I went back, searched the memory bank, looked through all, all my Twitter, looked through all my Instagram, tried to think of something for January, February, right? And the only thing I could think of was the Menace Society. Now, things may have not ended the way that I and many others hoped, you know. I uh, definitely feel like we – it was kind of like – was something that fell off really quick. Like Flappy Bird, kind of like Flappy Bird, right? But it was a fun – three to four week stretch, you know, maybe even a bit longer, like late January to like early March. It was, it was a fun stretch for sure. Right. Like, um, the, the idea, you know, the concept that the shirts, like the shirts came out sick, man. Shout out to Elijah. If he's watching this, but the, these shirts, they came out sick and it's something that has never been done before. It never will be done again. Like this is legendary business we're talking about, but you know, you have us going to Walmart at 8 PM in the night or that's not my life, like 8 or 9 p.m., right? And on the way back, like after we get 40, you know, white cotton t-shirts or whatever, uh, on the way back home, two of my fellow Menace co-founders, you know, go ahead and get pulled over by a cop because they were going like 65 on a 35. Drive responsibly, guys. No speeding, you know, no going 10 miles per hour over the speed limit, no drinking and driving. You know, drive responsibly. I'm not trying to make light of a very ser serious situation, but they get pulled over for speeding on the same night. And I remember the next day I was informed to, you know, post a speeding ticket on social media. But after about two minutes of it being up, it blew up too much. I had to take it down, right? Uh, but yeah, just like selling the shirts and, and going through the Google form responses and all that. It's a lot of fun. Um, and it's something I won't, you know, it's one of my favorite memories of the year and something I won't forget for sure. Okay, T4C. So T4C, for you guys that don't know, is the Twin Cities Chinese Christian ch uh, Church, right? Now, just because they say Chinese in the title doesn't mean that, you know, other people are excluded, right? You know, I have some, you know, white people there I love very much, right? But anyhow, um, I started going there because I had to do an ethnography project for CIS writing. And if we were talking about least favorite moments of 2022, all I can say is just I'm so happy that class is over, right? But I'd go to for an eth ethnography project. I didn't have to, but I chose to. And um, I ended up staying because it was a lot of fun. It was a good place to go, especially on a Friday night. Um, and, I, you know, a lot of legendary stuff happened there too. I, I might use the word legendary too much in this video, but just, you know, don't worry about it. 
Um, there was – you have uh, – one day there was like six of us who play Ultimate, right? And we were like, okay, what can we do uh, with – uh, our free time, not at, you know, not at like Bible study and all that's over. And we're like, yo, why don't we just play Frisbee? And I'm like, where, the, where the heck are we going to do that? Right. So we find this like storage room, this garage and just make two tiny end zones and legendary video up on the channel. Go check it out. Ash and Skies, Austin, 3v3 intense church Frisbee match. Right. One of my favorite videos on the channel for sure. And we had a great time. And, and there you can see that the Ian Sai Ash and Jen connection that, you know, expands across honestly the whole country at this point. Right. Uh, but it was really fun. You also have, you know, on the left here, without getting into too much detail, without revealing what everything means, you know, people can go ahead and enlarge the image, you know, use binoculars, go ahead and really try to dissect what everything means on there. But it was, it was, it was really funny. You have some just stories that, you know, particular man, maybe Austin Jin and Ian Sai, you know, those two had some legendary stories at my time there. It was, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I for sure miss it. Okay, Alti. Couldn't get go, couldn't go through the video without talking about it, right? A um, lot of fun, for sure. I have a lot, like, you know, made me 10 times better physical shape. Uh, some of the moments from the year, especially given the fact that the team was basically, like, I, by the end of the year, I was basically friends with everyone on the team, and, you know, everyone was real cool. Um, some of my favorite moments probably would be on the games. Just, like... The, the state, you know, I miss practicing the stadium, man. I wish we would have played a game in the stadium, right? Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to, but it, it was 30 degrees out. And I'm a very changed man. Like in California, sometimes it would be 55 degrees in the morning, and I would be freezing so bad. It, it was horrible. But like in Minnesota, and, and this image doesn't do it justice because, you know, you see me in the long pants, right? But that's because I basically, it was getting brutal out there. But it's snowing. Some days it's raining, right? And you just got to grind through it, you know? It was all about the grind then. Um, and, and even beyond even beyond just the season, I mean, Frisbee Friday, some of my favorite times. I, I you, People don't know how bad I wanted to go back during Thanksgiving break, you know, just so I could sky some kids again, right? Um, what else is there? Uh, ooh, the time I hand-blocked Eli Shaver. Like, stuff like that I'm never going to forget. You know, and I can go up to his face and jaw about it. And then he's in my comment section saying, oh, it's because it's in the morning. Yeah, it's I, I miss it for sure. And, and hopefully this spring break, when I come back home for a little bit, hopefully I'll be able to catch one of the practices, see how the future of the program is doing. Um, but I had a lot of fun uh, throughout my time there. The Madison trip, um, you know, some of our like some of our games were pretty exciting. It's even though at the end of the day, you know, you didn't win the didn't win first place. Right. Didn't didn't win the state. uh championship even though that was probably never like super realistic um sometimes you got it like even if you don't reach your end goal in something you could still be satisfied right it's as cj mccollum said as he got traded away from the blazers you know maybe you didn't maybe we didn't meet our Aetna goal but that's how life works right like that's kind of how it is sometimes all right timberwolves gonna keep this brief but uh right here on the left man patrick beverly when we won that play-in game to make the playoffs Top 18 happiest days of my life, I tell you right now. Um, as a as an avid basketball watcher, enjoyer, and we're going to get into basketball later in this video too, but as someone who has sat in, through the years where our starting lineup was, you know, including guys like Jeff T, guys like, um, what's even his name, Travion Graham, Todd Gibson. I've been through, I, I watched Derrick Rose score 50 points live. I Sat there on Halloween night, you know, deciding to watch my team play instead of go trick or treating. Maybe that was because I was fourteen already, but like still, but still, you know, these are these are big things, right? And watching that moment, man, that game, it was it was never, it was it was never one of those games where we had control at any point before like the final one minute, you know, like in the third quarter. I still remember we're down six after the end of the third quarter, you know, but but heart hustle and and. What, what, what's happening to the Timberwolves this year, it shows. Like, Patrick Beverly, he may not be that great of a player, right? Let's be real here. But heart, energy, you know, guys like Jared Vanderbilt, it matters a ton to any, you know, any type of team sport, any type of team activity, right? Um, so it was one of the most fun times of my life watching that game. And unfortunately, the Grizzlies series didn't go too hot, but eh, whatever. We'll, we won't mention that in the video. Um, 
All right, this next time I just I just I just titled the vibes because it's it was like I didn't even know what to say for this one, but it's that time you know after AP tests were over in late May, and understandably you know uh, maybe some people like even failed their AP test, right? Like somebody could have got a one on AP physics, but like after those times ended, you know just the sixth hour free hour, right? And having a free hour was, was glorious. You know I miss those days, right? Uh, actually, I don't because in college you kind of have a lot of free time, but a lot of it you have to use working, right? But just six hour free, you know, plain stumble guys, going outside, enjoying the nice weather, the few times we have it this year, you know, outside it's it's all it's all cold and snowy right now, but enjoying uh, the six hour free hour, enjoying the just relaxing environment, watching fights go down, right in the comments, you know, peep the caption right there. Um, it was it was really fun day. It was really good times, right? Like uh, this this is something that uh, senior year, second semester to me, it definitely lived up to the hype, right? Everyone always everyone always says, man, it's a good time, but it really was. It really was, and uh, it was a lot of it was a lot of fun. As you can see here, we got the we got the whole group watching something on my computer. Who knows what it could be? You know, it could really be anything we were watching. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think it was. Graduation had to include it in here. I actually this was a last second edition. I made this slideshow at 10 a.m. this morning. I look at grinded on it too. Like leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe because I grinded on it. Right, put a lot of work into this video. Uh, but I didn't put graduation initially, mostly because I forgot. And then I thought about it. I'm like, okay, I have to. Right, it was the year I graduated from high school. Like, um, you know, 10 years down the line, when I see some random dude from my high school, and they're like, okay, when'd you graduate? I'm like, class of 2022. You know, you know what they say, two two. Too, too, it's, it's an annoying cheer, right? But anyways, um, yeah, it was, I mean, the graduation itself wasn't that special, but uh, it's, it was a good moment. And senior party after, what I still remember, that was like the second time I ever played poker. And shout out to Maximus Gregory if he's watching this, but dude, I took all that dude's money. It's a fun time, right? Uh, but yeah, had to throw in graduation in here. Had to throw a pick with Edward Ningwo Yu, the sus among us master in here. Let's go on. UCLA, right? Okay, so... I've, I've really not talked about this much on the channel. Um, kind of just a hard topic to talk about. But uh, so the day I got to UCLA was the same day that we actually had an ultimate tournament in ooh, Lakeville. Lakeville, right? So I woke up that morning. Um, it was a Sunday morning. And I went ahead and checked my email, right? And I see the notification. And I remember reading the message. And it was... It was a particularly happy feeling, you know. I was I was extremely happy. I did not film a reaction or anything, but um, I went to tell my parents they were happy. And uh, you know, people like to use this label "dream school," right? And uh, I completely understand. For many people, they attach themselves to a school or something like that. And uh, it's just never been for me, right? Because something like college admissions, which you know, I don't want to get too into here. Uh, but hey, shout out to some potential seniors watching this going through applications. But something that is so out of your control where you uh, can only do so much and sometimes you'll get rejected or, you know, something like that will happen for no particular reason. Like you can't beat yourself up over it, you know. Um, I applied to a decent amount of college. I got rejected from a decent amount of colleges, right? It sucked. But what are you going to do about it, you know? So UCLA was a school I obviously – really liked. Um, and, and what I was referring to earlier with dream schools was like, I, I don't put a label like that on anything. Cause it's, it's like, okay, if you, if some person like really loves, let's just say, I don't know, university of Auburn, right. Or Auburn university, excuse me. And they get rejected from there. It's like, it's like, okay, don't you feel like trash afterward? You know? So you don't want to put, you don't want to put such standards there, but it was definitely a school. Like said, you know, since I was younger, I'm like, damn, I want to go there. Right. Zach Levine, Russell Westbrook, Brett Hundley, you know, that's my spot, right? Real ones will get the last reference. Uh, anyhow, it, it, I mean, it was, it was, it was really, it was really cool getting in and, um, uh, you know, getting real here. Like a lot of people know my story because I haven't, and I've never been a guy that's super secretive, at least about my own things, right? For better or worse. Um, I was not always the best student in high school, right? Like, Specifically, when we look at my first two years in high school, I made a lot of mistakes. And these aren't the mistakes a lot of people talk about, like, you know, like crashing their car into like a, a pole or something or like hitting nicotine too much. No, that wasn't me. But like just 
just not smart decisions. Like the day before I have an important final, like deciding to spend all the gaming, right? So just let it serve as inspiration, right? It's never too late to turn things around, right? Some people right now, they just had their first semester of college, right? A lot of them, you know, I've heard stories of, of really good friends of mine, phenomenal friends of mine, you know, their parents ask for their grades and they need to Photoshop them because the first semester didn't go their way. But as a wise man once said, it's never about how you start. It's about how you finish, right? And that's the case with everything in life. Name one counterexample to it. You can't because there isn't one. Sorry, got a little rowdy there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's never too late to turn things around on a, really anything. And, you know, you, you keep like you, you put in the work, you grind, the results will come. That's just my, that's just what I want to say about this, right? Second one, I got to pick on the top of the, I think these are called like the desk stairs or something. That was my first day there. Um, and it was fun, right? Chess. Got to talk about chess, right? It's like probably one of the biggest parts of my life. And I've covered this in videos before, but it, it slowly became less of my life, I guess, as I got into other things and, and stuff. But what I, what I came to the realization was if, if, like, honestly, if I didn't have, if I didn't have chess, like, what would I be good at? Like, it's not much. It's a, it's a short list, right? Um, and, and weirdly enough, and this is not maybe a good thing, maybe not a proud thing to admit, but over the last year, I had progressively spent less time on chess. Like, like it went from middle school where I, you know, put in the work, right? I, and I maybe not even put in the work. Like, I didn't study that much, but really every day, like, if I wasn't, at school or if I wasn't outside, you know, I was, I was really played a decent amount of chess, right? Like, you know, we're talking like 10 blitz games a day. And, uh, it wasn't like I was an addict or something. It was something I found fun and I was good at and I improved pretty quick. And at some point, you know, I think, uh, you can only commit so much time and money to it. Like a, a lot of people don't understand, unfortunately, that, it, you know, chess is just like a lot of other sports where when you're, you know, for example, I just came back from a tournament in Las Vegas, right? Five days, nine games. Through those nine games, through those five days, and even the two days beforehand, and even right now, a day after, your mind is like, it's solely focused on on best making your best performance. And how do you do that? It's not just during the games, right? It's you got to eat really well, you got to sleep really well, you got to prepare really well, you got to play really well, right? So you got to be locked in for like six, seven days straight. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I'll admit, you know, just during this last tournament, when things work going perfectly, right? When things go wrong. I really thought about just hitting the retire button, you know, like what Tom Brady did this, this, this winter, you know, just retire and then I can come back whenever I want. Right. But like, but it, it was, it's brutal at times, but the highs, you know, winning, it, it trumps it all. So I, I don't know. There's nowadays, I don't get nervous doing many things. Like I, obviously you're going to get, you know, when Greg Joseph spot a kick a 61 yard field goal, you know, your, your wiener is going to be tingling a little bit, right? Like things like that. But I've, you know, when you're about to ride a roller coaster, right? You get a little tingle wingle. But in general, uh, I've never felt like that type of rush except when playing chess. And this, this, you know, this past week showed me that, right? And despite not spending as much time, over like the last 10 tournaments I've had, I've played about 10 tournaments in a year. That's a pretty standard number, right? I've done pretty well in almost all of them. I've been progressively increasing. I'm still, you know, Sitting in the top 15 for 18 year olds, like that's cool. That's really cool. And we'll see. Like, may you know, maybe I can keep improving. Maybe I can keep pushing up. Or like, hopefully, this is not you know the end. But it, it, you know, chess is it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. At UCLA, man, in high school, most people aren't into chess. Understandably, like people got other stuff going on and stuff. But I feel like as people get into college, like a bunch of kids there think it's really cool, and like a lot of them play on chess.com and stuff like that. It's it's just dope to see, right? It's hashtag dope to see, but. Also, hashtag never dope, right? Do not pull a Lance Armstrong, okay? On we go. Hoops. Basketball. I don't know. I go through seasons with basketball. Summer, I play a ton. Went to UCLA. There's gyms there. There's access to, you know, hoops. I didn't touch a ball once until November. I went there. I airballed two shots. And then I had to end on a make, right? So I went for a quick layup and got out of there. You know, it, it's tough. It's tough, right? When you don't play for a while... And you're not a really good player. Like I, I heard, I hear these stories during the NBA bubble. Like these players wouldn't touch a basketball for six months, and they came back and they were decent. Chris Middleton's the name, if you're wondering. But uh, I, I, I mean, this past summer, 
basketball was so, was so fun. It was really so fun. I think I played almost every day in the call of park, made the 15 minute drive over from my house. Um, and that was when gas prices were expensive, right? But it was worth it. It was a lot of fun. You know, um, I, I, I've had my moments shooting, and I've kind of fallen off, but I've had my moments shooting. Like, there's been days where I can't miss, right? Pull up from half court, cross up LU, right? Like, I, I, I lose my dribble, like, you know, 50 times, lose my handle, right? But you just switch the shot, and it's a great feeling. Um, I still own Jason Carlson in 1v1. You know, I have that video on the channel where I dusted Julio Wan with full due respect, right? I've lost sometimes, you know, there's that video of me against Manit Patel, right? Un very unfortunate video. I might actually take it down because I can't post losses anymore. Um, only post wins. But uh, anyhow, hoops this summer was really, really fun, and I miss it for sure. Uh, pickleball as well. Pickleball, I hadn't played that since middle school. And one day, um, I get an invitation from, you know, my great friends Maximus Gregory and Sam Saibay. And they're, they're wanting to play pickleball. And I'm like, you know what? Any sport, I'm just an ultimate competitor. So any sport, you know, you put me you put me in the ring, right? I'm about the business. So I had a lot of fun playing pickleball uh, and getting and getting froyo afterward too. Um, it was, eh, it's a time I missed for sure. And I can't wait to get back at it. I heard basically Griffin O'Connor and Sam Saibe actually finished second at a University of Minnesota uh, pickleball tournament and I was actually you know I think I forgot to text Sam this but I was going to tell him I'm like you know I heard you and Griffin finish second it's really a shame that uh, I couldn't be there in Griffin's place because we definitely would have gotten first but hey you know what that's how life goes um, poker something I only got into once college started right um, gambling it's not necessarily a good thing right but when you gamble and you know you can win it's smart money right it's like prize picks you know always bet the old you know always play both sides right? You can do that even with, you know, anything in life. I'm not going to go further in detail than that, right? But poker was a lot of fun. Ignore the fact that this is Ian's B real. I didn't have any, I didn't have any poker for those online. So I had a, I had a, I had a steal from his, right? Shout out to Ian. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I, I think, you know, for me, I, I personally enjoyed it because there's a lot of similarities with chess, right? You got to think about how your opponent's thinking, you know, you got to think about all these combos and stuff, right? There's, there's definitely some overlap there. Um, really interesting game, really fun. Uh, and it was, you know, probably the thing, like, I spent a lot of time at, at college doing, maybe a little bit more time than I should have, um, but it, you know, developed into another, you know, another, another light hobby of mine, right, and that's good, it's always good to have more hobbies, you know, always good to get new interests, right, read books, do all that, do all that jazz, on we go, right, story night, okay, this is about UCLA Ultimate, so, um, most, you know, college club sports are, are gonna have some, uh, interesting, interesting moments, right? And uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to put this, right? But uh, without going into too much detail about the stories, but basically the way the way this worked was every first year player on the team has to go up there and tell a story, right? And you're assigned a name based off the story. And I don't want to, you know, I don't know how much of this is it's confidential information. You know, I know uh, many players on the team actually uh, follow the channel now because my, my story had to do with the channel. And a shout out to all of Doug, right? So I don't want to, I don't want to get too revealing here, but and I just threw the second pick on because I, I didn't have another picture to use, right? So why not put yourself, right? Um, but uh, basically, you, yeah, you got to go up there and tell a story, right? And that night, I was not looking forward to it because I'm not always the best at that public speaking stuff. I get, you know, I get a little frazzled sometimes. I forget what I want to say. Um, but that night was a lot of fun. I heard some things that you know you you would never expect to hear. Um, once again, without getting into too much detail, uh, but th that whole that whole process and you know apparently they like draw these like web diagrams like six steps forward to get to people's names. It was just it was super interesting to me. Vikings. This is to close out the video, right? The Vikings couldn't go out without talking. So I went to my first game ever this year, right? Probably one of the coolest games to ever go to, right? Because it's going to be forever etched in history. Greatest comeback of all, uh, biggest comeback of all time. 33-0, um, and I got to see it live, and they're going to be talking about that decades from now. How cool is that? And I wanted to leave at halftime, and my family didn't let me, right? Admittedly, I have to admit it, you know, but it was it was freaking phenomenal. The, it, the environment, even when we were losing, I know I, this is ironic because I said I wanted to leave, but even when we were losing, like as soon as a good play happened or something went in our favor, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And for anyone who's even remotely in a football, or even if you're not into football, right? 
tickets by the final day they tend to like fifty to sixty dollars. You know, if that's if you're able to afford that, right? Like if you you know highly recommend making that trip down sometime. Parking and all that is a bit of a nightmare, so good luck with that. Um, but seeing the seeing this team do so good this year so far, um, whether or not it's luck based, you know, I've at times been a hater of this team, right? But seeing plays like this on the right with Justin Jefferson, like you know, I have to be happy, right? Like I have to just you know. I, I ain't seen this in a long time, right? I ain't seen this in a long time. And getting to watch, like, you know, a team that's actually winning, and I wouldn't say has a chance to go to the Super Bowl, but has a chance to win some playoff games, right? Um, it's freaking amazing, you know? No swearing, right? So that's why we say frick. Uh, but uh, kid-friendly channel, you know? Trying to make, you know, trying to get monetized one day. Uh, but that's it, yeah. So, uh that was it for the video. I just want to go ahead and thank all you for watching. If you, if you watched this uh, pretty long video to the end, or even if you clicked on it, or even if you liked it, or even if you commented, or whatever, you know, just shout out to you if you're, if you're listening right now. Um, I really always appreciate all the viewers of the channel. Absolutely. Um, like, it, it's, you know, something I didn't put a slide for in this video, but one of the coolest moments of 2022, no doubt, is the fact that we've gone from about 100 subscribers to 254. And I'm not a math guy, you know, but that seems like 2.54 times the amount of subs, right? Imagine for 2.54 times the amount of subs we have right now next year. That would be over 500. Is that possible? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Actually, I think we have 256 now. So excuse me, 2.56, right? Square root of 256. What's that? 16. There you go, right? But, um, I mean, imagine we multiply that, you know, again next year. It'll be over 500, right? And we can keep going here. I, you know, to me, for me, YouTube's always been about fun. It's always been about interaction with, you know, people I'm close with. And uh, it'll probably continue to be that way. But, uh, I, yeah, I'm super grateful for all the viewers. And, and you know, when I decided to make my YouTube channel on May 22nd, 2021, it definitely changed my life uh, very much for, for the positive. So, um, hey, I hope all of you have a great New Year's Eve. Um, enjoy watching the, the countdown or enjoy hanging out with your friends or whatever you may be doing. And I hope you guys had a great year. Hoping 2023 is even better for everyone. Um, you never know what might happen, right? For better or worse, but you just got to trust that everything will work itself out and it'll be a great year. And I'm going to just keep working towards it being a great year. So uh, with all that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead, stop the recording right now. And uh, I'll see y'all soon, all right? So until next time, Ash and Jen, we're out.